Hello everyone and welcome to Unitronics webinar. My name is Ophir Levy and I'm the head of the technical support in Unitronics. And beside me, Mr. Boaz Karmi, VP Sales of Unitronics. Hello Boaz. Hello everybody. Uh, good day and once again, welcome to Unitronics webinar referring to our May, June release that you all recently received. We will introduce today our new remote I.O. modules, as well as the Unitronics 4G routers, regarding software, the new Unistream firmware, and new Unilogic version, uh, with the functions of BACnet IP server, high priority ladder tasks, uh, new motion control functions, as well as new authentication for increased security. All these new updates will be also available and distributed this week to uh, Unitronics uh, uh, PLC users uh, that are in database. Um, please contact your uh, Unitronics regional sales manager for any further commercial information you may need. I'm sure there, there will be questions. Um, you all received already the updated uh, prices with the new um, uh, products inside. In this stage, I will ask of you to go into details and take it from here. Thank you uh, all for joining us today once again, and good luck, Ophir. Thank you, Boaz. So let's start. Okay, so first of all, let's uh, start and review the new hardware we are releasing this uh, May-June uh, launch. So the URB TCP2, which support uh, up to six I.O. modules, uh, was already released uh, for VisiLogic, as you remember, but it was not available for UniLogic, so now it's uh, supported also in UniLogic. This is more cost-effective adapter, as you know, comparing to the URB TCP. And we added new I.O. modules, including load cell inputs, PWM outputs, and analog inputs and outputs. Let's review them now. So, as you can see, the first one in the table is the load cell. Uh, this uh, URS02LC has two inputs for load cell. Um, we, the input range for the load cell are from minus 150 millivolts to plus 150 millivolts, 24-bit resolution, and a conversion time of 500 microsecond. You can see that it's a relatively really fast uh, conversion time. We have two new PWM output models <clears throat> with support up to 5 kilohertz, push-pull type. Another uh, output model, high-speed uh, we call it pools. Uh, it supports basically also acceleration up to 300 kilohertz push-pull type. Uh, we'll see later on. I will demonstrate as well. Two analog I/O models uh, for current and voltage, 15-bit one uh, which is current 0 to 20 milliamperes, and one for uh, voltage 0 to 10 volts and 0 to 5 volts and 1 to uh, and 1 to 5 volts. Uh, basically, uh, each one of them ha has eight channels. And uh, two I/O modules, analog outputs. Again, for current and voltage, 15 bit, uh, 0 to 20 milliamps for current and 0 to 10 volt uh, for voltage. Okay, I will just jump to uh, Unilogic to show you how it looks like. So here is uh, Unilogic, and here we can see basically I used here, uh, here is the uh, load cell model. If we scroll down here, you can see here uh, the load cell. We have an option for filtering from the list. And of course, under the inputs of the load cell, we are able to see that we are getting the bridge and the reference uh, uh, from the input, 
and then using a simple formula we are calculating uh, the weight uh, you can see here uh, in the new uh, web in, the, in our website you can find the examples we made examples for the PWM the pools and for the load cell so you are welcome to download and test it uh, this is for example the load cell uh, example and you can see here that basically you just need to enter the uh, user units the rated capacity so for example i'm using a load cell of uh, 10 kg so since i wanted to have it in grams so i put it uh, as a 10,000. Uh, my load cell is uh, uh, 2 millivolt to volt and we can use a, a factor from the formula in order to calibrate it more accurately and we're supporting also the option for tar uh, to uh, decide what will be the weight if it's uh, using some uh, other equipment. So, for example, here now I'm measuring around 4 kilo, 263 uh, uh, grams. So this is an example of the low cell. If we take an example also about the PWM, so here we connected the PWM directly to high-speed input of the THS. Uh, for ex example, I will put here, let's say, 3000 Hertz with a duty cycle of uh, 50%. And uh, we can see immediately the counter in the input is running and measuring the frequency that I'm outputting from the remote I.O. If we look on the pools I.O. model, so it's really good model for stepper motors because uh, it support, again, as I said, up to 300 kilohertz, and you can set the amount of pulses you want to send to the, to the motor or to the drive, let's say, and uh, supporting also acceleration. Uh, so, for example, let's say I will set the frequency this time of uh, 5,000 hertz, and we'll set a quantity of, let's say, 10,000 pulses, and let's say I want to use acceleration. Uh, by the way, you see acceleration is supported only from three kilohertz and up. And uh, just setting the run bit on, and you can see that I generated 10,000 pulses. We are also supporting uh, here a continuous pulse. So if you just want to use it as a PWM, so you just set the bit of the uh, continuous uh, of the continuous and then you can see the pulse output will keep uh, outputting the pulses we have also a bit where we can reset the counter and then you can see it will start uh, counting again so very simple models to handle very uh, useful for uh, stepper motor in case of the pulse and also for uh, application with that you needed to weight measure uh, to measure weight and you couldn't do it with Unistream, now you can do it with our remote tile. Uh, let's continue. So we added also to our uh, portfolio a new router. We know that uh, there are many countries that so stopped supporting 3G net uh, network and we decided to add a new router that support 4G LTE, cellular network. The router provides many other features uh, like uh, uh, onboard I.O., GPS, port forwarding, and of course, SMS messaging. Uh, this all, of course, depends on the model of the router that you are going to select. Uh, the SMS functionality is fully supported in Unistream series, both send and receive. Uh, the router is, of course, connected to the Ethernet port of the Unistream and can provide at the same time both SMS and remote access capabilities. Here we can see that we have two models for the router. Uh, there are more part numbers, we'll see them in a moment. Uh, the B5 and the B8. The B8 is the, the more advanced model. You can see that it supports more features like RS232, RS4854, GPS, more I.O., and so on. 
we have also, as you can see here, a part number for a DIN rail. So in case you want to uh, install the router on a DIN rail, you can use and order the same the same part number. Uh, the DIN rail uh, supports both the B5 and the B8. Here we can see all the part numbers, uh, which basically supporting different uh, uh, continents like uh, Europe, North America, South America, Australia. In USA, we have AT&T and Verizon and so on. You can find all in the catalog. Here we can see how the router looks like. Very nice, very compact. Uh, this is the B5 and this is the B8 model. We can see here also uh, how uh, it looks like uh, in terms of ports, in terms of uh, SIM card slots. And uh, here is the B5. So you see it has a one LAN port, one one port, one SIM card slot. Uh, we can see the signal strength on, on these uh, uh, lights, LEDs. Uh, the power, of course, uh, when you buy the router, you get everything in the kit, the power cable, uh, Ethernet cable, uh, even um, a pin to take out the SIM uh, drawer, and so on. Here we can see uh, antenna for Wi-Fi, for uh, antenna for mobile, two antenna, uh, and a reset button for uh, resetting the router to its default. Here we can see the B8, so we can see that it has much more uh, LAN ports, uh, RS-232, RS-485, uh, more IOs, and you can see that it supports double SIM card. So you can put two SIM cards and you can even do balancing uh, between uh, the two SIM cards uh, in terms of uh, uh, sending SMS or in terms of uh, using it for uh, remote access. Okay, so I just want to jump to Unilogic to show you how it looks like there. In Unilogic, under the um, PLC communication, we can find the router option. So here uh, we can see uh, the option to enable the router. We need to set the IP address, address of the router. Uh, here you can select which model, whether it's a B5 or B8. In general, right now, it doesn't matter because uh, we support now only the SMS functionality. So once we will start supporting here, uh, maybe the GPS, which is supported in the B8, then it, it will make a difference. But right now, it doesn't matter which one you select. Uh, for SMS messaging, uh, you have to put here a username and password. This protects you that if someone will try to hack your router and will try to send SMS via your router, it will have to enter username and password. So it's kind of protection and an option to enable the receive SMS messaging and which one, uh, which authorized numbers are allowed. Uh, to be used. I will just show you also. Here is the router interface. So basically, I just browsed to the router IP address and we can see the interface of the router and you have a lot of option here, as you can see, uh, like you can see the signal strange and you can see uh, which IP address we got from the provider. But what I want to show you for now is only, you can see under services, uh, we have the SMS gateway. So I just want to show you what is necessary to enable the SMS messaging. So in general, once you go to the SMS gateway, you just need to enable here the SMS gateway to put the username and password, which must be the same as here, of course, and that's it. This is the, the all things you need to do in order to start supporting SMS messaging with the router. Okay, so let's continue to the next feature.
Okay, now we are talking about the new Unilogic version. Uh, so Unitronics tracks the dynamic challenges that cybersecurity present to the industrial automation. And starting with this Unilogic version, uh, Unilogic embedded user authentication measures into both Unilogic software and Unistream firmware. So this enables you to prevent unauthorized access to your Unistream controller. For this reason, Unilogic requires users to enter PLC password before executing commands such as download, online, upload. So any communication from Unilogic to Unistream will prompt this message that you see here. We highly recommend you to change the password. Okay, that means that uh, if you will uh, if you will change the default password, anyone that will try to access your Unistream will have to enter the password. By the way, once you change the password, next time you will download the application or go online, Unilogic will not ask you again for the password because the password is saved in your PC. If other PC will try to access the controller, it will ask from it the password. But once we will enter the password, again, it is saved in the PC. You don't need to enter it again. But again, the main thing here is that now your Unistream is protected. OK, uh, in addition, the communication between Unilogic to Unistream is now more secure. And this is why we added now a new port HTTPS port, which is 8001, uh, which is now used uh, between Unilogic and Unistream. It is very important that if you wish to upgrade now to the latest version 1.29, and you have Unistream controllers already in sight, which are behind the routers, make sure to go to the router and forward also the port 8001 because after upgrade you will not be able to access it anymore from Unilogic you have to you remember you until today you forwarded ports 22 and 335 for online and download you will have to also forward now 8001 okay another new great feature is that Unistream controller can now act as a BACnet IP server, okay, supporting many a range of services and objects and tasks. Okay. Please note that the BACnet server requires license purchase available from Unitronics sales representative. Okay, so basically, Unitronics offers you one hour trial in order to enable you to explore the new exciting feature of the BACnet. Please know that each time you power up the controller, the trial of the one hour starts again. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that uh, in terms of the functionality of the BACnet, in term, it means that if you have a BACnet application, mainly in the building automation uh, um, market. Uh, I believe that until today, you used our uh, BACnet gateway. But this time, if you have an application where the controller, Unistream, it needs to be a server, meaning like a slave, meaning there is a uh, BACnet client, like a like a SCADA system that wish to connect to Unistream, to Unistream controller to read and write using the BACnet IP, you can use now our BACnet IP server. Uh, okay, in a moment, I will show also how it looks in Unilogic. And basically, once you purchase the license, you will get a key, for example, like a key that you see here, the only thing you need to do is to go to the UniApps 
go to the BACnet licensing, enter the key. If the Unistream is connected to the internet, it will automatically activate your BACnet license. If it's not connected to the internet, then you can generate a file, send it uh, to Unitronics. I don't know if yet it will be a website that you will use, and then you will get back a file that you will upload it back to the Unistream, again, for offline activation. Okay, before we'll continue to SNET IP, just to show you under protocols, we have now our uh, BACnet IP. So here, basically, you can just add a BACnet server. These fields are basically optional. It's not a must. Uh, this just will help for the BACnet client when it's connect to Unitronics to see more details about the profile, the location, and so on. Under the I.O., this is the place where you add the objects, like analog inputs, analog outputs and analog values, and binary inputs, outputs, and value. So you can see here in this example what I did. I just added, for example, a, a temperature input, uh, some analog output, and so on and so on. You can define, you see that for each object, it has its own attributes, uh, like min max, resolution, update interval. And I can show you I'm using application called Yabe, which is a, a BACnet Explorer, a BACnet client uh, that is connected right now to my controller. And you can see here all my objects that I defined in Unilogic. And for example, you can see here, I will just bring up my uh, HMI via my VNC. And you can see here, for example, here is the, I'm measuring my, my analog input, which is the temperature. You can see that if I will set a value of uh, the binary output, so you can see here the going, going to on, like if I change the analog output, can see immediately all data appears in the client. Very simple configuration. In terms of Ethernet IP protocol, we added a very important uh, features. Uh, first of all, we enabled the option to import EDS files to the adapter nodes, meaning that when Unitronics is a scanner, you can import now the EDS file. So instead of opening it previously, like with the third party tools and check what are the addressing and what is the data size and how it's parsed. Now with the new Unilogic, you can import immediately the EDS file. In addition, when Unitronics is, is an adapter, we now enable to create EDS files. So once you configure your adapter, you can create an EDS file and send it to the scanner. Meaning if, uh, for example, you have uh, Allen Bradley controller wish to communicate with Unitronics, you can get the EDS file, import it in his environment, and you are good to go. One uh, last thing is we had another uh, requirement to separate the RPI, which is basically the interval of sending and uh, reading and writing data. Uh, so we, it, there was one RPI for reading and writing. Now you have RPI for reading and RPI for writing. So you can decide the interval for each one. In terms of uh, motion control, uh, we added the option uh, to uh, update uh, the firmware uh, of the drive. Uh, in general, you don't have to do it, only in case uh, there will be some bug in the future and we will release uh, uh, or there will be new features, uh, we can uh, ask you to update uh, via the uh, wizard. The wizard is very simple. Just next, next, next. Uh, there is a special cable which you can also build by yourself. It's basically uh, 
RS-485 connection uh, and you can uh, update the firmware. We, you can see also the part number of the cable in the accessories uh, of the server in our website. Uh, besides me now also, uh, David, David Chimo, our head of uh, motion control, uh, which will explain the next features that we added in the servo system. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to be here. So the features we added, except from what Ophir just showed you with the um, drive upgrading uh, tool, we added a few features in terms of the axis itself. Okay. The first feature we added, we added two mechanical uh, systems, two mechanical, new mechanical components. Uh, one of them would be a rack and pinion actuator, and the second would be a roller feeder. And, and the main topic with these actuators is that they allow you to select and define rotational units, but eventually work with linear units for position and velocity and acceleration and so on. So these are the new uh, actuators you can find on the new version. In addition to that, uh, we did a few, we did a step forward with user units. Okay, so until today, you can work with user units for your position and for your velocity, but for torque, you would use a, some number you cannot really understand, and it was like 0.1% of motor rated torque. But since we did a lot of uh, uh, simplifications for the mechanical components, we thought it will be very good to implement that also for torque. So your torque can be also in user units. And, and the meaning for that is now you can define your torque to be in Newton meters or uh, pounds inch. In addition to that, you can work in forces. If you have a linear actuator, you can work in Newtons. Okay, so I would say a user that is not a mechanical uh, engineer would have a lot of easier uh, work to do by just defining the forces, the forces limitations, and so on. In physical values and not different numbers that you cannot truly understand. Now, in addition to adding the limitation options, as you can see in the screen here, these are your new limitation options. Of course, the default will still be 0.1 degree, 0.1% uh, of moderated torque, but if you want to change it, it's on the axis interface. In addition to that, we developed two uh, new function blocks, MC Apply Force and MC Apply Torque. You can see them at the bottom. These blocks enables a torque command or a force command, but they take in consideration the mechanical calculation for friction and, and efficiency. So eventually it should generate a force or a torque at the output after your mechanical components. So if, for example, you had a motor with an oil seal like ours, and then you have a gearbox and a pulley connected to a rack and a pinion, the force eventually that will be applied is calculated after all these components on the way. So it will compensate for the friction and the efficiency losses uh, and, and generate a new command that will take that in consideration. In addition to that, in the outputs, we also provide all the information so you can read the actual force being applied and the actual torque in motor percentage. So if you have some uh, unknown uh, uh, parameters, you can monitor them and, and work just as you worked before. And we just added a few additional features that should help the programmers, the control engineers, to find themselves uh, with these kind of commands without having the need in calculation. In addition to that, we also implemented a, a new uh, support for the continuous update bit. As for today, continuous update also supports now MC relative and MC additive um, and allowing you to change the command on the fly even for those blocks. And, but please note that this feature will be only supported if you'll upgrade your drives to the newest firmware uh, we offer within the tool of here just showed you at the beginning of the session for the drive update. Okay, uh, as Ophir told you, we developed a few additional features within the drive that allow us to do that. 
And in order to do that, you must first make sure you updated your drives to the latest uh, firmware version, and then they will be supported as well. Um, so, a few additional capabilities we added for the diagnostics. Okay, if you worked so far with the our server, you would notice that after you're changing parameters and you power off the PLC and power it on, some of the parameters might be reset due to the fact that the power up values were stored in the access struct haven't changed unless you did MC write for them and you change the power up value, which basically was impossible unless you went to the access interface itself. Today, we took a step forward with the integration and we provide you with a tool that enables you to work on your PLC directly without the need in the PC after you downloaded the our diagnostics project, ready May 1. Then when you're changing something in the access struct, you have the ability now to read and see the differences between what was configured on your access uh, interface and what's actually what are the actual values except from that and except from the fact we're marking that so it will be easier for you to see the differences you have now a new button that an, allows you to change your project so if you're doing that and you're clicking that button it will change the power up values for the different uh, uh, parameters that were changed okay so now it's possible you can just work directly, do the integration without programming. And after everything works well, you're clicking the upload button and it will be saved to your project. Okay. A few additional features are the, um, the new actuators we added basically allows you to work with uh, floats. So it's something that you didn't have before. And in addition to that, now when you're changing the values for the um, sizes, for example, if you want to work from millimeters and change it to microns or for microns to centimeters or so on, we will change the uh, values automatically and we will round it up or down, depends on, on what's needed. So you don't need to change the value all the time. We're doing that uh, automatically. In addition to that, we add an option for selecting custom units. We had some complaints about users that didn't work with the units we offer and had something else. Though it doesn't change anything and, and the matter, what's matter most is the relations between the input and the uh, shaft revolution and the output units. We added the option to select custom units. So you'll see custom on the side and will not make any confusion when you're working on the axis interface. Thank you, David. So let's continue to the next feature. We added the high priority task for the uh, T42 model for the USC, for the US5 and 7. This is basically, as I said, high priority task, what you know from vision like interrupt. Uh, once you uh, open a new project in the T42 model, you will see automatically under the ladder model, you will see new ladder function, which is called high priority task. Also, once you will click on it uh, in the toolbox, uh, you will see a new menu, which is called IO manipulation, uh, like immediate read input, immediate read counter, set output and reset uh, output. So basically now you can build your own uh, interrupt uh, based on uh, a time. Uh, you can select from one millisecond up to five millisecond task. So this is a great new feature for if you want to make high priority task. In the alarms, uh, we made an enhancement for the history widget. Uh, if you remember, uh, if, when, once you were rebooting the controller, the history widget was cleared. Now it is not going to be cleared anymore. Uh, it will keep the history in the alarm widget. And uh, the clear button is an optional whether uh, from Unilogic uh, attributes, you can decide whether the user will be able to see the clear button or not. Uh, this is the way, uh, basically, if you want to clear the list. 
In addition, uh, there were many requests from our customers to be able to export and import the alarm groups, uh, since uh, probably in many applications they are using the same alarming. So now you can just right click on the group, export, and then you can open another application and import the alarm groups. In the Modbus section, we added a new command, command number 17. Again, this is a command from the standards of Modbus, uh, read write multiple registers. So in general, in one command, we can both read and write data. Of course, the slave must support this command. Between Unistream controllers, of course, it's supported. Uh, you can uh, use this command between uh, two Unistream controllers. If you want to uh, use it with a third-party slave, make sure that it supports this command. This is a really good command, for example, for if you, let's say, use uh, like a third-party remote I.O. and you want in one, one command both to read and write. Another great feature that we had, again, a lot of requests from our customers is to be able to export the Modbus remote slave. So think about an application where you have a, a, a slave like a electricity meter, for example, and you already filled the addressing uh, of the electricity meter, how, how to, what to read, what, what to write, set points, and so on. And now you want to use the same electricity meter in many other projects. So instead of building it from scratch, you can import, you can, sorry, you can export the slave and then import it to another project. And we also added uh, the support under Modbus TCP for unit ID zero. Uh, we had a project in Poland where uh, a customer used a specific VFD, like ATV63, which uh, was required to use ID zero and now it's supported. In MQTT, we increased the username uh, in the MQTT broker connection to 128. It was limited, uh, if I'm not wrong, to 50 characters and customers that wanted to connect to Microsoft Azure Hub uh, was a little bit limited with that and we increased it. In addition, uh, we added what's called machine identifier to our MQTT topic. Uh, that means that if you have, for example, a lot of uh, machines uh, that uh, are using basically the same application. Uh, let's say a machine builder is building 50 machines and he's using the same application in all of these machines, but each time that he wants to publish or subscribe uh, to topics, he needs a different uh, uh, topic because if all of them will have the same topic, then we will have data overwritten. And so now we have a new option, uh, which is called PLC name. I can show you in a moment how it works. And under the OPC UA, uh, we gave the option to import the client certificate in advance. Uh, if you already have it, uh, you don't have to do it uh, uh, by connection. You can immediately import the certificate under the UniApps and uh, this will save you time. Just to show you uh, how it looks in UniLogic, the MQTT, uh, identifiers, so under the MQTT, if I will go to, for example, publication, you can see if I'm using this uh, syntax uh, with the brackets and put plc.name, so now basically the topic, you understand, it's, it becomes indirect and the PLC name can be set in the UniApps, I'll just show you. One more feature I can show you now is that there were many requests for the password to be a numeric uh, uh, keypad, not just alphanumeric, and we also support it now. Again, it's by selection. Okay. So just to show you that uh, if you go to the next page under PLC properties, you have the option to set a PLC name. So basically now, if this PLC name is machine one, 
So think that now the topic of this specific PLC is machine one uh, the, uh, slash temperature. So if you will change it per PLC, all the topics will be changed automatically and this will save you a lot of time in order to change it manually from the software. This is exactly what I just uh, showed you that the UAC now support option for only numbers. If you want to use a keypad, uh, just a numeric keypad. Under the data table, we added the option. Uh, if you remember when you used arrays in the data table and you looked on the data table widget, you would see only the index like 0, 1, 2, 3 of the array. Now we are also providing the option to show the name of each member in the array. This is very important uh, when you want to uh, edit the data or show or, or look on the data and you want to know which tag means what, so it's very useful. Under the time zone, now we are supporting uh, partial hours, so it doesn't matter even if you will set it from UniApps, you can see now supporting, uh, for example, uh, three and a half, and there is also uh, an option to do it from the UniLogic itself. Under the emails, uh, we improved the security and now we are supporting uh, the TLS 1.2 version. In FTP server, we added the option to limit uh, to a specific folder. So in case someone is connecting to Unistream controller to uh, view the files or get the files, you can decide which folder he will be able to access. Under the Canvas sniffer, we added an option for a filter. So for those of you who use the, uh, the sniffer, can now filter the incoming data according to the ID of the device. In the VSC server, we added the support for a uh, new resolution, 1024 and 768. And there was some enhancement in the import and export application via USB in terms of the path.